Yep, hello again, it's me. Um, back in the workshop, I uh, haven't been out here for a couple of days. Uh, lawns don't mow themselves and hedges don't cut themselves, you know. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd make a start on the um, columns. Uh, I've decided uh, that uh, I'll change them very slightly and um, I'm making them out of 16mm uh, diameter aluminium bar. Uh, this is uh, to give them a little more stability I think. Um, and I'll also show you a few drawings that I've printed out and um, explain how I go about making um, a design come into um, reality. Over to the bench. The way I go about uh, putting my designs into the metal or perspex in this case um, is I draw the design in 3D which you've already seen and then I produce uh, DXF uh, 2D drawings of the various parts and dimension them on a separate uh, program. Um, this is because I before I did 3D, um, well, I've been only been doing that for about 18 months or two years I suppose, um, I got well used to using QCAD 2D drawing um, and at 75 it, it was going to take me too long to learn 3D and dimensioning and what have you in, in Aliba so um, I just used the drawings, the drawing um, package that I was used to and uh, this is the sort of thing I come up with uh, and I bring these out into the workshop and uh, use them for reference. This is the uh, RAM link and uh, these are the parts that I cut out on the on the 3D router the other day um, and there's an the old style column uh, the design evolves I suppose uh, as it goes on and instead of making them out of 10mm as you can see I'm making them out of 16mm aluminium and the process will be to face off the end and then I'm going to cut a little recess in there so there's an annular ring for the column to sit on. This gives it more stability on a flat surface. And then I'll drill and tap both ends, having faced off to length of course, and done the same thing with the recess. Um, and that'll allow me to screw in some metal um, well, probably bolts actually, and then cut them off um, to provide thread all the way down to the, the face and beyond. Right, well I'll get on with those in a minute on the lathe. I haven't played around with that, uh, the lathe for oh, a good couple of weeks or more. Um, then I'll probably progress to the mill. You can see that very well. The uh, you can just about see the recess for the bearing. It's come out slightly undersized, so I'm going to have to set this in the mill, um, set up uh, or centralise the hole under the quill, and then just bore it out very slightly with the uh, boring head. Um, then I will get the two together, have a bearing inserted in here, leaving it slightly proud so that I can line up the other one on top <laughs> obviously having bored that out as well and that will hold them together I can then clamp them in the vise so that they are perfectly aligned take a very light skim on the bottom here so that they are exactly the same height um, and the distance between that and the that face and the centre hole, hole here is is not absolutely critical. Uh, and then I can drill 
the mounting holes and tap them whilst it's uh, sitting in the vise. So there we are, that's a um, job for, uh, well, probably take me all day. Well, in fact, it will take me all day because I, I haven't got enough of this and I've had to order some, but uh, courtesy of DHL, that should be arriving today. Right, I'll go over to the lathe and see if it still works. Um, I hope this comes out with a fair amount of clarity. Uh, I'm sitting right at the end of the lathe and using uh, the zoom feature on the camera to bring you up close to uh, the business end of uh, the work. Uh, the aluminium bar is mounted in the lathe in the three jaw chuck and I've got a polished CCMT um, insert uh, in the tool. Uh, right, so I'll just face it off first. taking off the minimum amount necessary um, because this is only hacksawed to uh, about I think it was about 121 so I don't have a great deal of meat to play with next I'm going to turn a, a, a small recess in the end uh, the diameter is not uh, hugely critical but it's just enough to leave an annular um, amount on the end I think, uh, yes, I'm going to turn the tool around a bit and hope that I can get in there, get me a slightly better better defined recess. I'm not at the limited travel of the slide. I haven't uh, taken off too much. Let's check the length. No, we're all right, it's 122 on the rough end, so, phew, that was lucky. And, uh, I don't know whether you can, uh, that's what I've ended up with. Okay, turn the red now. I'll face it a little, and take it out again and, uh, check the lengths. See how we're getting on. Nice. 
so I can't really see what you're seeing but I'll try and approximate this in the uh, in position that's 120.9 so by my calculation that's 0.9 of a millimetre got to come off there Concentricity is not uh, 100% vital on this bit. It's um, it's all to do with length, as they say. So there we are. That's a One nineteen point nine eight. I'll look at that. And if one comes out much shorter than the others, well, you know what's going to happen. They're all going to be taken down at the shorter length, unless I've got another piece of aluminium available. So here we go. We take the uh, centre out here. surface and now I'll set up for uh, drilling and tapping um, I'm probably going about 15 mil with the uh, tap drill uh, and then follow up with the tap in the chuck I won't bother changing over to the, uh, uh, the tapping attachment I started off in the chuck and then finish off the tapping by hand. I've just uh, quickly brought you back to the lathe. Uh, I'm on my second column. I've already faced, recessed, drilled and tapped one end. Um, and I've faced it off, measured it and it comes to 120.74. Um, now I'm not confident in uh, the uh, carriage and dial calibration that I can accurately take off 0.74 of a mil. So I've set up a um, um, dial uh, indicator uh, held on with a magnet to the shield of the lead screw. Um, and by bringing the tool up to the end of the work there you hear it go clonk zero the dial bring the tool outside the work and then by 
gingerly moving the carriage I get it to 0.74 can't have a bit of luck on that I think I'll lock the carriage there um, and then just do a straight cut across And this lady luck is uh, looking down on me. That may well be the correct length. I'll unlock the carriage. See what you're doing next. Do more of that. The recess um, now I'm going to do it is uh, switch off so you can hear me. Um, drill and tap, and that's another one done. However, I'll first take it out and measure it. Um, and while you're here, you might as well see whether it's worked or not. No hiding from this, is there? <laughs> well, the simple answer is it didn't quite work. Uh, 119.94 so we're within and that's what's it that'll do for me right off we go then I'm starting off with the um, turn that off so you can fighting chance to hear what I'm saying uh, I'm starting off with a spotting drill um, I prefer those to uh, a lot of people on YouTube use centre drills um, in my opinion they're for making centres and a spotting drill locates the um, tapping drill or any drill really um, more accurately in my opinion but here we go, off we go, here comes the noise again You can probably see that better than I can with my glasses on. Uh. Oh, come on. Oh. Right. Um, got uh, what did I say? 15 mil. Uh, right, here we go. Setting the tail stop uh, dial zero.
and I'm using a 5mm spiral flute tap This moth tail stock slide it in. And now I've got to stop filming because I've got the tripod too close to the uh, cross slide. So this will jump a bit when I reposition the camera. Uh, the tablet wrench is now on and uh, I said Chuck's going to turn as well now so here we go nice thing with the spiral flute is of course the chips come flying out towards you and don't build up ahead of the tap so I can go down very nearly as far as the bottom of the hole and get a nice clean thread without having to back off and clear the chips there we are, that's that. Probably could have done it under power, but uh, best done with the sliding tailstock. And as I'm going to be constantly changing from spot drill to clearing drill and then to tap it's a, a bit of a faff putting that on there we go let's clear out all the tilt and uh, on to the next one I might just run a countersink in there just to give a a pretty look to it, no it's not going to be seen I'll do that off camera and uh, well basically it's rinse and repeat on the other end um, and that'll make for pretty poor viewing so I won't let you I won't uh, make you sit through that uh, I'll do the rest of them and uh, I'll show you the finished article uh, just going to finish off this video with this uh, quick clip because um, I think you've suffered enough and uh, these are all the columns uh, drilled, tapped and uh, with the central relief on there hope you can see that alright yeah I think you can um, and that completes this little section uh, part 3 will be uh, Tidying up the motor mount, drilling the holes in the bottom to mount it, probably uh, do a little skim across there, maybe not, oh there's a little bit of tab left, and um, skim the base of the uh, spindle mount, finishing off those and uh, hopefully that will be a fairly short one so if you have been thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time bye for now